All right, our next presenter for today is Trevor Taylor. And the, the title of Trevor's project is The Art of Musicianship. So when we think about our world, we often just always hear music. We could be anywhere, we could be at a grocery store and there's music blasting to accompany our shopping. It's between skating parks. Everywhere has music in a way. But I feel a lot of times we don't take that second to think about why the music was created or how it was created. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to introduce the idea of thinking like a musician, thinking how music's created and introduce that to the school. My project focus was to teach students the skills of musicianship and really have them begin to see music. I also wanted to improve the atmosphere to other school because I feel when there's more music being played, there's more people expressing themselves. And it might get a little bit crazier, a little bit louder, but I feel that seeing people really express themselves and seeing the joy music brings is all worth that noise. And I wanted to increase the knowledge of the arts. Oftentimes in the school, we don't have the option to have that many art classes or high arts stuff as that. So this was able to introduce that. And the last thing was I kind of wanted to get rid of the hostility that the school had in some ways. Last year, Tyler wanted to play guitar, so he'd bring his guitar to school and he'd start playing. But oftentimes what would happen is within, he would play a bit too loud or a style that no one liked, and within 15 minutes of every lunch period, someone would come up and they would complain and he'd be either sent outside or he wouldn't be able to play at all. I feel that, a that not being able to share music with your friends in an easy way such as school was something that I had to get rid of. So I would like to talk about the meaning of musicianship because when I say the word musicianship, people kind of look at me and they're like, is that a word? Like Ms. Keno said that, which is a class at UNLV, so it is a word. <laughs> but I like to say this quote, musicianship is about training the student not just to be a player of an instrument, but to be a musician. The best way to do that is to take the instrument away. My students learn to be musical without an instrument. The instrument is basically a machine. It only makes music if the player knows how to make music. I took that with the whole project. I didn't just want to teach people instruments or ideas. I want to teach them the ideas of music and how it's composed and the little things of how music works. And the best way I felt to do this was to make a club. It would be a club where students could come and they could learn and progress with each other and it'd be friendly and it would be inviting. And you could kind of get rid of those barriers that music has a lot of times. Because when you pick up an instrument, you don't always have someone to play with and you don't have someone to listen to and you don't have a lot of the advice that you really need. And that causes music to seem very terrifying, and I wanted to get rid of that. And another thing I really wanted to focus on was influencing a few. I could, stand, I could have stood up here at two big events and just talked to you guys about why music is important, but I feel that would be in no way as important, in no way as impactful, as if one of your friends learned how to play an instrument in the music club, and then they shared that music with you. The hearing a friend play is more important than any words I could say up here are, could be. And the last thing was that was personalized. I didn't want this to be a textbook approach. Here are six books, learn them. It was, I looked at every student, looked at what they were strong with, and taught them based on what their strengths and weaknesses were to try to make them feel as most comfortable with music as they could. This is my favorite photo of the year. What happened was, this was a Tuesday. Nothing special about it, and I said, I, I, want, I need to take a photo. I took a few steps back, put my camera in this direction, and took a photo. If you look at this, we see Jeffrey and Nigel, who didn't know each other at the beginning of the year, but now are talking quite a bit after school. We see Wayne, who had never been really part of this whole group, talking with everyone. We see Nelson, Tyler, and Christian for, out, for an hour before they both get picked out. It's not that the club is just a club where you go and then you're done with music. It was a club where the, the meetings were just when everyone was together. And really, there were small kind of, you, everyone was around you, and music was always around you with it, and you were with your friends in all these situations. I like to say that management was one of the most important things with this project. So one of the big things was setting up the project. And I was really lucky because Ollie was setting up the songwriting club at the same time. So essentially what happened was that we, our clubs were similar enough that we just kind of did the same steps together. And it kind of like, allowed us to accelerate the pace and go really fast. We were able to both go around lunch and get interest for both our clubs, talk to different meetings, plan out the time so they didn't conflict. And I really feel grateful that I was able to do that with someone and do all the scary 
stuff in a way, but still by myself in a way, but still with someone. Another big thing about the club was to check up on members constantly. It would be stupid to just go and say, here's an ish man, then check up a month later, and then see that, and then get mad because they didn't make progress I wanted. No. I checked with every member at least once a week, and sometimes twice a week, or three times a week, or four times a week, signs every school day, just to make sure that they had all their questions answered, and that they were progressing in the way they wanted to, and that they were able to make the music that they wanted to play. And if I was going to be around them that much, I didn't want it to be where I was just there and just bugging them and pestering them as a teacher. I wanted to become their friend. I would often talk to all the members friendly and get to learn them, learn what they like, have friendly conversations. So it wasn't just, here's music, I'm only here for music. I wanted to make it friendly with everyone. And their big thing was reminding. And this was very big, as I feel that every single member of the club at one point woke up in the middle of the night and said, our performance is on May the 4th. I'm pretty sure every single one of them did. And if, you, and if there's one of the members sitting around you, you can probably look at them and they're like, yeah, that happened. Another thing was just making sure that everyone was prepared. So one big thing was I had Nigel and Jeffrey come to me every single day during lunch to practice seven Ish Army to make sure they were prepared and they were going to be confident when they got up on the stage. And last thing was organization. And just dealing with the small things, such as how to set up a stage or just general ideas such as that. All the things that seem kind of like, seem that can be annoying at times, but if they are done. All right, we see the next slide. Okay. No, we, uh, we only skip one. So with this, I didn't want to just be a whole bunch of beginners playing music and then just not having that ultimate higher guidance. So what I did was I had three guests come into the club. I had Fig Wigfall, who is a saxophonist for Santa Fe and the Fat City Horns, as well as Celine Dion. And then he has a very jazz background. So when he came in, he didn't refer to anyone as people or like him or her. He referred to them as cats, for any of you just jazz terms. And that kept going where he where your ability to play an instrument was chops. I don't think he called it a guitar a guitar, he called it an ax. So probably I should have assigned some type of vocab lesson to everyone before they got up there so they knew there wasn't this like different language between English and jazz. And then I also had Anne Alapon come in. She is a pianist and composer who played a lot of wedding gigs, but then has a very musical background and, well, musical and Broadway musical and a very classical trained music background. So we got to see a whole different side. So the members could see one side that was jazz and one side was that classical and kind of contrast and compare and really listen to which one affected them more. And the last one was Jeffrey Trower. Jeffrey Trower works with community productions and leads drum circles around the valley and works a lot with percussive therapy and then does a lot of that stuff. And that was a whole different side from the other two, seeing a direct application of music in that way. And one of the events, and one of the things he did was that he had us do a drum circle as our first thing. So we all got in a circle and we had a whole bunch of instruments and we all kind of improv our own thing and kept it going, kept the rhythm going. Now the problem with this oftentimes is that it's hard to do a piece if everyone's improvising to like coordinate stuff. So what happened is that we had a drum facilitator in the center of the circle who would tell us how to like raise, how to be quiet or kind of coordinate in that way. So I have a video of that. It's like, it actually big rockets, and there's different ways of that. And it was really engaging and so nice to see everyone just kind of playing along with each other. Now with this, I didn't want it, to it just to be a whole bunch of people playing music. I wanted to get them to perform and share their own music. And that led up to the pancake breakfast, which was probably a real bad gig to accept. A lot of the members had only been playing for two months at this period, and we only had a month to repair. And what ended up happening was a lot of members spent two, three weeks to learn their song and only had one week to practice with others, which wasn't a good distribution. But it got us a taste of performing. It got us the feeling of what it means to be on stage 
and told and showed everyone what they need to do to really throw a good performance. I feel that was redeemed by the musicianship performance. This fixed all of our mistakes, and we were able to practice into our comfort because we had a lot more time with this one. And at this point, we were all friends. We had been playing together for almost the whole year and talking with each other. So at this point, everyone knew each other's names. Everyone was friendly with each other and could talk. And it wasn't that we were kind of strangers who we hadn't played before. These were people that we had grown up as musicians with. And we had more fun because one of the best feelings of music is being able to play a song that you're proud of with your best friends. It's definitely one of the best. And then everyone was proud of the performance overall, which I think is one of the greatest things. Now with this, I was also able to teach the choir seminar for first semester, so I taught this with Ollie. I did the first hour seminar with covering music theory, reading music, intervals, and beginner harmony, which by the end of it got everyone to reading music and then kind of a beginning to seeing how music pieces together and ideas such as that. And then Ollie did the songwriting part the second hour. I was also given the opportunity to teach first grade music lessons, which were greatly fun. But when I thought of this, I thought of what don't I want this to be? Because I remember in kindergarten or first grade, someone gave me a recorder, and then there were lines on the board, and somehow they related to the alphabet, I had no idea where to put my fingers, and ultimately I was just confused the whole time, as there were too many things, and it wasn't really that for music. I think we all kind of agree with that notion of recorder class, and we don't remember anything of recorder. <laughs> So what I did was, I would give every kid a shaky egg and kept it all percussive, where it was just everyone going against each other instead of playing. It was everyone doing rhythm that was a lot simpler than trying to incorporate notes. So I tried to minimize words in many, as much as I can, emphasize hearing. As you see on the photo in the middle, that was one of the lesson plans I wrote. I wrote four of those and went to the first grade teachers for a meeting and talk with all of them. I was able to teach every Thursday for all of second semester, essentially. And then at the end, I assigned a survey to everyone. So if we look here at the one on the left side, this is a survey I passed. And it was just some basic questions. So some of the topics we covered, such as piano forte, swing time versus straight time, just to see if the kids remember doing it, remember what it was. And a vast majority of kids said they remembered this and that they enjoy music. And there was always one aspect that they really enjoy the class. And they learn music and were kind of experienced it in a more fun, interactive way. Now, if you look at the photo on the right, it was kind of this clapping, shaking game, which I'm going to have all of you do now. All right? So what we're going to do, we're all going to go on a journey. So I need everyone to clap. One, two, three. So we're just going on a journey right now. And then there's a big mountain. You can't just walk on a mountain, you have to floor. So one, two, three, four becomes one, two, three, four. One, two. Four. And there might be a force that we have to go fight. And I'll come to this. One, two, three, four. And there's a gong, so I stop. Guys, we're in the first grade. So it's kind of this. <laughs> well, after a while, they wanted to be captured by goblins. Goblins weren't apparently scary enough. They were fun. <laughs> So it was interactive stuff like that. We were just playing games and having more fun about music instead of this, here's what notes are and all that. Also on the left here, we have a few photos of kids doing an activity where I gave everyone a drum. And then as they were playing, the, all the other people in the circle would have to do along what they're doing. So it's kind of like a Simon Says at the same time. Really vicious, like when the, your right arm goes up, it goes up this high so everyone can fully see it. You don't have to raise your right arm. <laughs> But it was like really visual, so it wasn't just hearing music, it was really seeing it in a lot of ways. Now, with this club, with this project, it was a lot of getting other people to really experience music, and not just about me, it was about everyone else. I really felt that I wanted to share their opinions and their views on the world about music, instead of just having it be by myself. So I have Seth's quote here. Before the club, I literally had no experience, nor the desire to learn an instrument. I feel that everyone should have that push towards learning an instrument, because it only took learning a small song to instantly fall in love with the uke. The club gives you the, this atmosphere where you're playing with other people. Everyone was learning just like me, so we took our baby steps until I made music. It's an awesome feeling to go on stage to perform these songs that we practice for. I feel this describes music for a lot of people. We're just learning one tiny song, gets you hooked on it, and it can become a lifelong passion. And that initial tiny step towards the song, maybe just like, if you're on bass, ice ice bass, which is under pressure, yeah, that's what it's actually called. 
And that is a single line, and that might get you addicted to an instrument, it's really progression. Our next quote was from China, and it was, I already knew how to play piano and sing, but doing it in a group of people I've learned to think of as friends really makes a difference. Because of this club, I learned that talent when playing an instrument is great, but it really doesn't mean anything if you don't know how to translate that talent to adjust to other people to make the whole unit sound good. And this was the other part of music. It wasn't just introducing people to an instrument, it was introducing people to music and how to play and how to interact with others. Now with that, I would like to wrap up with three points, which are, don't be afraid of music, find those around you to join in the journey of music, and that music is an experience that everyone should try. When we think about music, it often seems so scary, and there are so many absolute professional musicians who have to take years before they are able to even get up on a stage. But what I say is that a beginner can make just as good music as them. So what happens with a beginner is they can't exactly play the notes they want to play. Their left hand isn't fast enough to fret the notes or something like that. So what ends up happening is they might know one or two chords, but they play those one, two, one or two chords and they want to express so much more, and you can feel that through the music. So oftentimes, you can just feel what a beginner wants to play, and you can hear so much more, even from the simplest chords. And because of that, I feel that beginners can make some of the best music, even with a few days' practice, if they really just play with their heart. And with playing with your heart, find those that you can share music with. Don't just let music be by yourself. Try to share it with people and get their input on it. It might be that you pick a person and you talk with them and you play an instrument with them. Or there might be someone where you just go, every time I learn a song, I want to show it to you. And by doing that, you get to experience music and you get to share a part of yourself and properly express yourself through this medium that influences our world. And like I said, music is just a thing where just one simple, tiny song can get you hooked on it and get you enjoying it so much. I would like to give a special thanks to everyone who attended a musicianship club meeting, my three guests, Dave Whiffle, Ann Alapon, and Jeffrey Trower, Miss Lance for being the advisor for the club, Miss Kino for being my senior advisor, all the first grade teachers for letting me teach to their kids, all the first graders for being as rowdy as can be, but still so much fun, Miss K for allowing me to teach the choir seminar, and the choir seminar kids for allowing me to teach them the beginning works of music. And as a last of special things, I'd like to thank anyone who listened to one of the club members play, or played music of their own, or listened to music, or even thought of music. Because music is one of those ultra expressions, is one of those things that you can express, and it's so human. And even just doing those things, as long as you know with your whole heart, is what matters. I would rather listen to someone talk about their favorite band and just gush about them as long as they can, instead of listening to someone with perfect technique who has no emotion. Really, emotions are what make us human, and really, can be they can be expressed so much in music. So thank you everyone who took in part in music. Thank you.